So I'm going to talk about the impact of the Centre Atelier project at Ellesmere College in our early learning pathway. Uh, my name is Gemma James, so I'm one of the early learning pathway leads at Ellesmere College and I'm also um, the other one of the Atelier Ambassador teachers. So, what have we done so far? So at Ellesmere College, we've successfully introduced and embedded our Atelier project, our Atelier time, into four classes. Um, we're expanding our early learning pathway, but I'll come to that um, in a little bit. So, so far, um, every week we have Atelier time in the classrooms. Each class has done it slightly differently, so some people have set times in the week and um, explore a material uh, for a whole half term. Some are having uh, like a paint exploration one day, a movement exploration on another day, and maybe a materials exploration on another day, and they're experiencing that for as long as they want to carry it on. Um, so we focus on one medium over time, and then we add uh, more in based on our students' lines of curiosity and inquiries. Um, we really watch them um, and see what we can do and add to build on their learning. Uh, we've also offered um, an atelier club, uh, which stands for all of our primary students, so that everybody has the opportunity to come and access um, some atelier learning time. Um, staff have been uh, fantastic in embracing this, so staff have been included in all of our residencies over all of the years that we have um, been experiencing them. Uh, we thought this was really important for their CPD to join in and experience what the artists support and their style of learning so that then that can then be brought back into the classroom. Um, we've also had lots of wonderful training. We were lucky enough to have Debbie Keat Hartland come in and run an inset day for us. Um, I've done some training. We've had uh, lots of artists in and staff themselves have taken on kind of that role of gaining more knowledge. We've got a member of staff um, looking at it through their um, appraisal and learning in their own time and we've also got a member of staff who's doing a master's currently and they're focusing their um, dissertation and research project on the Reggio approach and how um, it impacts um, our students so positively. And as I've said already we've hosted a variety of residencies across the years um, and across both our sites we've had um, natural items explorations, ink explorations, movement explorations, um, with some really, really fantastic artists. So the impact we have seen as a whole staff, an enormous impact this approach has on our students. Uh, majority of the students in the early learning pathway are pre-verbal. So it's a case of us really watching them carefully, really seeing what it is they're kind of exploring, what they're interested in, and then trying to build on that and work alongside them collaboratively to increase their confidence, increase their experiences, develop those links um, as time goes on. Um, so we've seen a big improvement in communication opportunities. Um, we watch those links they're making and we really look for those magical moments where, for example, we have a student who um, normally uh, doesn't want to be around anybody else in the classroom, spends most of their time in the reading corner, but actually during atelier time is out and in the classroom and exploring these different materials, taking turns with other children, um, which is absolutely fantastic, tolerating somebody else in their space when maybe in normal classroom life they don't. So we've seen some really, really wonderful um, engagement with our students in this style of learning. So I just want to give you some examples really. Um, in our paint exploration session we had a student who wouldn't touch any sensory items, he wouldn't touch shaving foam, wouldn't touch slime, wouldn't engage in those kind of wet play. So during painting um, atelier, at first he wouldn't come near the paint, he sat back, but this is where the importance of the adults getting fully engaged is, is so key. So the adults and the other students were straight in there, exploring in their own way, there was no pressure to do anything in a specific <coughs> way, it was all very much, this is what we want to do, this is how we want to explore it, and over time, he started to touch the paint with his hands, and then he started touching it with his feet. And then there are all the students are dressed in their outdoor learning outfits. And by the sort of last few weeks of this um, at 
SDA sessions. He was in there mixing colours, um, he was sat in the paint, he was using the materials and the tools to make marks. Um, which was absolutely fantastic. And then what we noticed was he was also doing this outside of the atelier sessions in our wider classroom provision. So now he's straight in there in wet play, he's exploring the slime, he explores um, paint just when it's out. He, you know, he was sat painting with flowers um, a few weeks ago, which is absolutely fantastic um, to see. There was another young man, uh, we were having a music uh, atelier session in our club time, and he wanted, he came and actually asked one of the teachers by just moving their hands to play a tune and he started to try and sing Twinkle Twinkle so the teacher we knew how to play Twinkle Twinkle so we did and he just watched it he sang along and then he went and got a beater and went to a different side phone and repeated it perfectly um, and played Twinkle Twinkle but then started singing the ABC song which I actually didn't realise is to the tune of the Twinkle Twinkle. <laughs> so, um, which was amazing. He made that link and also the fact that he had that kind of pitch, pitch perfection to be able to watch and see and listen and then go over and play it himself and then relate it to a different song. It was incredible. Um, another one. I mean, I've got so many examples, but I'll just share a couple more. Um, we had, uh, a, one of our teachers had an invitation to explore cardboard, but they also had the theme of transport, but didn't want to make anybody do anything kind of task-based. So they've got lots of different cardboard boxes out, loads of pictures of transport, and this young man went and sat in one of the boxes and then um, started signing for a steering wheel. So a member of staff together uh, with him built the steering wheel for the car, and obviously as a member of staff, you're introducing that vocabulary steering wheel. Then he started doing this and he wanted some window wipers. So again, they built together the window wipers and then they made this car together. And there was no pressure, there was no, you know, you are making a car today, this has just come really organically from kind of the provision that he'd been offered, that kind of invitation and also the kind of visuals that he could see around him. And then my last example is in our sort of Developmentally lowest stability class, so um, probably kind of think around 18 months, so off these children, but age seven. And um, they had paper offered to them. And at first, they didn't engage. They, they very much were doing their own thing, wandering around. And again, the staff involvement of getting in there, just exploring the paper, throwing it, ripping it, scrunching it. Um, over time, the children have now started engaging and working alongside the staff and now children, if they see paper, they will, they'll go and actually explore that kind of medium, they'll scrunch it up, there's a young man now that absolutely loves throwing it and watching it fall down um, and that's fantastic to see because obviously those children are some of our hardest children to engage and the fact that they are now engaging in just this really simple kind of um, provision it is wonderful because that can then be built on um, over time for them. So I've got some impact testimony. I'm not going to read it all out. There's a few statements there from some of the staff. Um, but what we have seen is staff feedback is incredibly positive um, through from all the residencies we've had. Um, the impact on engagement is mainly the, the big kind of thread that runs through the, the engagement of the students and also the ability for the children to then transfer such simple exploration into then the further curriculum provision that they have in our kind of early years um, setting, which is wonderful. So um, it's important, I think, to touch on, we have had lots of discussions about the simplicity and the importance of simplicity when we introduce these um, invitations to explore, because one member of staff who was in the paper ripping class came to me when they tried paint uh, at one point and just said, I don't, I don't know what to do, they were overwhelmed, it, it was chaotic, It was, the, and we had a discussion about what she kind of put on offer, and actually there was just a bit too much, and those children needed it stripping right back to starting with just paint on paper on the floor. And then from stripping it back, and then building on it over time, we've seen that they need that really simple start, they need to build their confidence, they need to learn what this material actually is, all the different things they can do with it, and then we can start adding more tools, sticking the paper all over the walls, giving them the opportunities to kind of really go in with their lines of inquiry. 
So our outdoor learning teacher has also embraced this approach, which is wonderful. She was very much a, used to do task-based learning um, and would have um, activities for children to complete. Um, but when I was talking to her the other day, she was just saying how she totally changed that approach now and she puts out lots of resources on offer. There's no actual task that, you know, no end goal that she wants to achieve. She goes with what the children are exploring and, you know, picking the flowers. She, she's wonderful. She ties in with everything we do and she's really, really embraced this approach. And she, she as well has noticed the kind of improvement in engagement, which is so essential for our children, just to get them engaging and exploring, which is wonderful. Um, I will say as well that over the years, we have also experienced huge amounts of residencies, but I'd say over the last couple of years is when we've really started embedding it. Now we've got this early learning pathway that's building and, and is going to be expanding. Um, but staff engagement at first, I think it takes a lot of staff out of their comfort zones. And often when you chuck out paper and paint on the floor, people step back, whereas it's so important to kind of take socks and shoes off and get in the paint yourself. Don't be afraid to get covered in paint. Don't be afraid to get messy. Um, don't be afraid to be rolling around in a blanket, wrapped up and dra being dragged along the floor by somebody else. It's all part of it, and it's so important for our students to see that because that's then what gives them the confidence to come in and enjoy and explore and see different ways that they could maybe do it themselves. Um, so what we've really seen over time is the shift in staff as well. I know that along the early learning pathway corridor, as we have it so far, staff are really engaged now. They know when it's atelier time. They know that we're going to be on the floor doing movement or yeah, getting covered in paint. Um, ripping paper, building towels with cardboard boxes, you know, depending on what we're exploring in that time and what we're building on. And actually, I think they've seen themselves a really big in, in improvement in the kind of trust and relationship with the children. Because as time's gone on, children are, don't take as long to get involved because they know that this is going to be something that we're all doing together and we all just get involved together now. And it's much, it's much quicker, that very beginning process of actually encouraging them in is getting much much quicker because um, the staff are also fully engaged and getting in there, um, which is really wonderful. And that kind of relationship and trust building is so essential for our students. Um, so I've spoken about impact and I've quoted lots of staff, you've seen staff, but as uh, most of our students are pre-verbal, it's hard for me to get an impact testimony from them verbally. So I just wanted to show you um, a bit of a montage of photos of what we've been doing over this last year. And um, hopefully you can see kind of the level of engagement, the joy that's taking place. Um, you'll see staff dotted around in there to fully embrace and immerse in the um, offer that we're providing at the time. So I just thought it was really important to try and get the children in there too for you to see. And then I think I've got one slide that I added in. So I just wanted to show you, so this is the young man with the car, um, built the wheels, we've got the steering wheel and he hadn't yet done his window wipers. But we, outside of our set atelier time, um, I think what I wanted to stress with this was that the skills that they're learning from this kind of exploration of one simple medium is then taken into their further classroom exploration. So a maths activity, for example, because we do still have the constructs of our, our um, educational system. We need to provide all those types of learning for them. But we've started to branch out and do it in a little bit different way. So again, it's not as task-based. There's an offer there, and there's lots of different ways that those students can explore that offer. So if it's a maths activity, we're not just saying you have to use this to um, support your understanding of addition, say there's lots of different things that they can maybe go and use and explore themselves. Um, so it's also impacting our wider curriculum offer as well as having those set times, which is fantastic. And finally, what's next? So um, because of the success of this atelier time and the success of all the residents we've, of residencies we've had, um, we're going to be rolling out the atelier time to four other classes. So our early learning pathway is expanding, so there's going to be four more classes in our early learning pathway downstairs, and then there's also, um, we're going to roll it into key stage three, the four classes up there, uh, because of the time um, and how important it is for our students to have that time to explore to then allow them to engage further in their further learning. 
Um, so that's going to be happening over the next few years and um, we're going to continue to offer our Atelier Club because so many children access that outside of our early learning pathway as well which is really lovely um, and we'll obviously continue with the residencies and everything else we possibly can because we're so passionate about this style of learning and I just wanted to finish on this quote from Loris Malibuzzi because I feel like it really encompasses everything that we're trying to do for our children in schools and the impact that, that allowing this really has on their learning. It, it's, it's incredible. So thank you for listening. <laughs>